the God of our Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. We come through this morning, Father God, a new Sabbath day in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, Lord, the black Messiah. We give you all praise and glory, Father God, to your son, Jesus the Christ, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for another Sabbath. We thank you for another week, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us safe. We thank you, Father God, for keeping our wives, our children safe. We pray, Father God, for those who are sick in the midst of us, Father God. We pray for a mighty healing to all the nation of Israel. We pray, Father God, for those out of camp, those who are keeping their laws, touching their commitment, and the spirit of your son. We ask you, Father God, that you have mercy on them, Father God. We ask you, Father God, you put your spirit of your son, Jesus Christ, in these men, that they may continue to teach the word in the forefront of the earth. We thank you, Lord, for continuing using our URC for thy glory, Lord. We thank you for putting your knowledge, you, your understanding, Father God, and the leadership, the bishop, the deacons, the captain, the officers, that we may continue to teach thy people, Lord. We pray for the whole nation of Israel, the 12 tribes who are scattered in the four corners of the earth. We pray for the healing, Lord. We ask you, Father God, you give us the spirit of unity to love each other like we love ourselves. We thank you, Father God, have mercy, have mercy on us, and forgive all of our sin, Father God. Let the whole congregation say, Hallelujah! 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 We also pray, Father God, for the destruction of our enemies. Those who hate us, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father, oh, Lord, they hate us. We ask you, Father God, that you destroy our enemies, that they may never rise up again. He sent the name of you, Son Jesus Christ, to give you all praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, Sons of God, hand salute. Well, time, time, time. Salute down. Face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Well, time, time, time. Welcome to the war room. Wow, unbelievable. I'm about to jump off the podium. Damn, you a prophet. I perceive you are a prophet. Oh, damn, simple thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Shalom family. Most high Christ bless you all. Happy Sabbath. Ladies, happy Sabbath. Ladies, you have the privilege to sit amongst these gods on earth. You go, don't, no, no, don't, don't, don't do that clapping. I don't, stop clapping. Don't, don't, just clap. Okay, now this time I want you to clap and act like you mean it. There we go. Fake it till you make it. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Where's the warriors at? Deacon Malachi was lighting with his prayer in that just now. Where the warriors at? Okay. Make it till you make it. Damn. Okay, so uh, giving all praise to the most high for those online listening uh, out there in IUIC TV world. May God bless and protect you if you fear and keeping the commandments. Again, IUIC have classes three times a day, seven days a week, bring out various topics from prophecies to healing to everything you can think about that the Bible talks about. And if you're not tuning in, you're doing yourself a disservice. Okay, so today's class, giving all praises, is, um, was actually put together by the deacons uh, and the captains and myself. So I, when I come in town, and all right, Austin, Shalom, Most High Christ bless you all, WCO. Um, we sat down last night and I had a topic that I thought was a fire topic and um, Bishop and the captains and we all got together and we put a mind around these scriptures. I'm going to tell you now, it's going to be a two-part. There's no way I can get through everything I want to get through, but hopefully um, it'll start shedding some light on what we're talking about. So today's class is entitled War Room. The door is, the door is supposed to shut to lock everybody in. Lights supposed to come on. But we didn't get that, you know, so I mean, I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of scriptures now. Thanks. I tried to put a little theatrics to it, but Anyway, so okay, war room. Real quick. 
Did I write down? Just bear with me, everybody. I myself was not prepared the way I wanted to be. Mm. Want to want to talk a little bit? Let's give Bishop Kanan a round of applause, please. <laughs> Shout out to IT. <laughs> but all praise the Lord gave us another Sabbath day to be here. Know this wonderful word gonna go out. I pray it edifies and boosts everybody's spirit because this is the war room. Do y'all brothers realize y'all at war? Yes, How many of y'all realize y'all at war? Yes, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. What do you say? Fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, shout out to OKC. Um, not sure why. Deacon just told me shout out OKC. So shout out OKC. Let me see. If, uh, I'm not sure why he went. Oh, sorry. No shout out for OKC. Okay, shout out to OKC. All right, whatever that means. All right, so let's begin. War room. So here's the thing about a war room. A war room is a room where men come together and they reason on how they're going to achieve a goal. What is the goal that we're trying to achieve, men? The kingdom, very good. So here we go. Step one is what are you fighting for? What's the purpose of going to war? As we said, we after the kingdom. Anything less than the kingdom is a loss. We're not compromising, we're not trimming our ways, we're not sharing anything. It's all or nothing. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Oh, do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, so in that, I hope you understand you have to count the cost. Because to get everything, you have to be willing to lose everything. You understand that? Yes, sir. I'm going to say again, do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, let's try this a little different. When I'm asking a question, I'm looking for a full participation. All right? If you guys get me amped up right now, maybe Lord will put the spirit in me and I'll give you a fire class. But I need to feed off for you guys, all right? Yes, it's going to be a long class, I can tell you right now. Oh, boy, I tell you. All right. Jesus wept. With that, we say shalom, happy Sabbath. All right. Now, that part of it is, is preparing the troops. Getting you men prepared. Getting us all prepared for this battle. What does it take? What do you have to do? And sisters, there's some parts in this you play too. All right? Some parts you're going to play this. How do we get prepared for this? We have to identify our strengths, expose our enemies, identify what do we have, what are the tools and weapons we have that, to, that can get us to achieve the goal, which is the kingdom. How to exploit our enemies. I'm not going to go through all of them because someone's going to be next week class, life lasts. But let's, let's just begin, all right? Okay, what are we fighting for? Second Ezra 2, verse 35. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Okay, do me a favor. Change Netramiah's mic or something like that or Netramiah. I don't know if it's you personally, but um, it's very low. Try that again. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Okay, be ready for the reward of the kingdom. That's what we want. We want the reward of the kingdom. Be ready for it. Prepare yourself for the reward of the kingdom, which is what? For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. First Maccabees 3. I want to tell you all something. Class like this really puts a battery in my back. Especially, um, I enjoy the moments when I get a chance to fellowship with uh the captains and, and the, some, of the, some of the officers, and then we start brainstorming. The scriptures start coming. It, it's, it's a great feeling. And I would tell you, brothers, for you all, do that amongst each other. Get a few brothers together and just 
pick a topic and talk and put together a class, it's a really good feeling. It's, I enjoyed myself last night. Let's go. Second Ezra, I asked for what? I mean, second Maccabees, first Maccabees, I should say, three, verse one and two. First Maccabees, chapter three, verse one. Then his son Judas, called Maccabeus, rose up in his stead, and all his brethren helped him. And so did all they that held with his father, and they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. You know what strikes me in that scripture right there? That they fought with cheerfulness. They enjoyed what they were doing. You have to, you have to enjoy this. I enjoy watching the ADL and the SPCL, whatever people are these, whatever. I love to see them squirm and re-situate their words from black Hebrew Israelites to, there's a new word, Israelism and all this stuff. Radical, all kind of stuff. I like to see them backpedal and shift. We got these people shifting. They don't even know how to read us. Black Hebrew Israelites, and then we send a high yellow brother out there, and he's confused. He don't know what to do. That warms my heart. I love that. I love to see them unnerved. Listen, what we're doing, I'm telling you something, is the greatest thing that could ever be done on earth, and we're all doing it part-time. Because we all got jobs. Imagine when we do this full time. Part time we got them worried like this. Man, listen. Ooh. With cheerfulness. With cheerfulness. Let's jump from that to verse 19. Verse I, want, I want you to read 19 uh, through 27. Verse 19. For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of an host, but strength cometh from heaven. Right. We ain't, listen. We ain't that big. We ain't sitting. We, we don't got a million man standing army. But who, what we got is what we need. We got the right men and some of you sisters that's in place helping move this thing forward. It doesn't come in a multitude of men. But we know this is the strength of God working on us. How many times have any of you ever seen a Christian confound us in the scriptures? I've never, well, I've seen it one time, but it's because the dude was a he wasn't supposed to be teaching. Let me be polite. He, he, and, and what he wrapped them in was foolishness. When God is with us, who can be against us? Read on. Verse 20. They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us and our wives and children and to spoil us. You understand that? That's what these nations are about. To destroy all families. So we know what we fight for. We fight for the reward of the kingdom. Along with comes to that, all wives that'll be joint heirs and all children. So we gotta buy. What else is there to fight for then? Read on. But we fight for our lives and our laws. Wherefore the Lord Himself will overthrow them before our face. And as for you, be ye not afraid of them. That's why they can't destroy us or beat us, because we here at IUIC is fighting for families, for children or lives for the law of God. And because we fight for the law of God, God is going to defend us. So people want to know the recipe on why IUIC is where it is, by the grace of the Most High. But he used men. He used Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasat, myself, the deacons, the captains, all you men that go on the corners to fight for the laws of God. I salute all of you. I'm in the presence of the greatest men on the earth. It makes me feel good. We fight for the laws of God, and the Lord is going to defend us. So come out the laws of God, you're on your own, buddy. You come in here, and you're breaking the laws of God, you got to go. You are, you, are a, you are the weak link. Got to get them up. No. I'm not going to sacrifice all this for one person, for one brother, for one unruly sister. Beat your feet. And all of you should feel like that collectively. You see somebody ain't right, ain't trying to be right? Nah. Expose them. Read on. Verse 23. Now as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them. And so Siron and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them from going down of Beth Horon unto the plain, where were slain about 800 men of them. And the residue fled into the land of the Philistines. Then began the fear of Judas and his brethren. So I'm going to tell you how my mind works. When I read that, I see other things in it, in the way I explain it. And I'm going to read it and tell you what I was, how my mind was working. 
What verse you start at? Verse um, 23. 20, 23. Read that. Now, as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them. And so Siron and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them from the going down of Beth Haran unto the plain, where were slain about 800 men of them. And the residue fled into the land of the Philistines. So as he exhorted them, he jumped down and went against the enemy. For us today, we're not going out in the streets with guns and fighting. Uh, but we down on them, man. We chasing them down in these churches. We got them running. We got them afraid. We got them afraid now. This ain't no time to backpedal. This ain't time to slow it up. No. No, keep them at bay. Keep these Christians confused. Talk something to see if we don't show up in front of your church. We may just show up just to show up. Got you backpedaling. You think you're going to stop us on YouTube? Are you crazy? I'm not even going to tell you, but we got so much stuff in place right now. And we're going to talk about another thing about you babblers that love to run your mind. Oh, boy, I'm about to go left. No, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Can I... Some of you guys talk too much. You guys are... Damn. You should have been talk show host. I'll read on. Verse 25. Then began the fear of Judas and his brethren, and exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them. You know, you know there's a, a, a great dread? You know what it is when they have concerted efforts right now? To, what, what's the call on, on the social media? Where they, uh, something banning us? Um, black, shadow banning stuff? I didn't, this is above my learning. I'm from the A-Track era. But anyway... Uh, shadow banning and all that stuff they do. You know, the kind of fear. Do you know they sit down in their war rooms plotting, how do we stop these people? They're like damn cockroaches. They're everywhere. What? Over here, this one over here, this one over there, over there, another. Co they, man, a great fear of dread and fear has fell upon them. They tried to silence us for so long and tried to block us out of the media for so long. But because the movement has grown so much and there's so many of us, it's impossible. All we got to do is double down. It's your job, ladies. Every time you click on the computer and you spend your time an hour and a half on Etsy or Sheen, that's what it's called, right? Sheen, that's what they did. I said it. I, my wife be on that stuff, Sheen. Damn, who's Sheen? I thought it was Sean. But anyway, you better be liking old videos. You better be sharing these videos. Each one of you do it. Every time you look at a, 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 a Passover outfit, you all should look at five videos and like them and share them. They can't stop this. Y'all, Esau, you are kicking against the pricks, buddy. Ah, man. Sucks to be you. Read. Verse 25. Then began the fear of Judas and his brethren, and an exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them. Mm. In so much as his fame came unto the king, and all nations talk of the, talk of the battles of Judas. Okay, I'm telling you, oh, Judas right now is Bishop Nathaniel, if you all don't know that. His fame is all over it. They mention him in the, in, the, in the circles of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X now. Not us, I'm telling you, other people are putting him in that circle right now. That's old Judas right now. That's old Judas right now. And you know they don't, and you know the nations don't want to do it, but damn, it's undeniable. It's undeniable. You, what you gonna do? Can't block it. Can't block it. Uh, I laugh. I'm telling you, I am so cheerful. Read on. Now, when King Antiochus heard I dropped, these, I read on. Read on. Now, when King Antiochus heard these things, he was full of indignation. So now, when Esau, what's that guy from the, the little? Uh, I hate the name they named. From the SPLC or the ADL, what's them again? The, the, the blat. Indignation is filled him. Read on. Wherefore he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. They start gathering all these Amaleks, pulling all their resources together, trying to figure out how do we stop this. Let me tell you something, Green Black. That's a messed up thing, Green Black. We got a war room, too. And we got a general, too. But more importantly, we got a God. <laughs> and you can't stop it. 
You can't stop it. You think we just mere mortal men and regular men? Nah. We ain't what you think we are. And you can't stop this. Let's jump on down. Verse 43. Verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. That's what we're doing today. We're restoring the decayed estate. We're taking you men out of all the drug use and abuse and whatever stuff you was doing to follow yourself. We take the women out of pants and all the whoring. Not that you men weren't whoring either. I hate, I hate to put the whore tag on you because you didn't do it by yourself. But you know what point I'm trying to say? We take it out of the decay to say living as African Americans, living as sinners. We're turning the minds of the people back to God. Let me explain something to you all out there listening. It's online. It's not part of the body. But you listen in the you listen um, through the internet, whatever. I forgot the word. Well, online. You better put your hand to this plow. You can't play this alone by yourself. Now, if you're in a city where there's no congregation, within you know a couple, you know, an hour or two, I get it. You don't have a vehicle. But those that are, are there, you play that passive laid back role. Nah, there's no need of you. God don't have no need of you. You better put your hand to this plow. You gotta be on. You gotta be on the Lord's side or on Satan's side. There's no two. You gotta make. A, you gotta make a stand. All of us out here, that's, we jeopardize our lives for this. You think they don't got? You don't think they, they got a dossier on me a file? I'm trying to be fancy on every last one of us. Y'all better sidebar. You better watch what you be posting online. I'm telling y'all, some of y'all are crazy. Y'all post all your business online. You leave nothing for imagination. You're, this young generation, and a lot of you idle women, love posting your business online. Damn. I know more about you from being online than when I see you in person. Mm. Don't think you ain't looking, be done. Verse 44. Then was a congregation gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. Right, that we're ready for battle. That we're ready for this battle. That we're ready to count the cost. All or none. Put it all on the line. I said this before, honestly, I don't know what there is to lose at this point. I mean, like, I mean not losing the kid, I'm saying in this world. If you're wealthy in this world, I mean, like really wealthy in this world, you sold out to Satan. One. But you got money. Let me ask you a question. What's the point in being super wealthy in this world? I'm talking really wealthy. But the rest of your people ain't wealthy like you. Because where are you moving to? You can't stay in the hood because niggas going to rob you. You move around Esau, he don't want you there. You got all this wealth. Wealth only matters when your next door neighbors look like you, across the street look like you, down the block look like you, the kids your skills going to, everybody's the same. Everybody got money around so nobody got to rob. That little money you have in this kingdom, that ain't no money, that ain't no real living. You have a little get to get, imagine, I'm talking me, you know, you guys, you, have, you, got, you got money, money, for real money. You decide to have a, a get together, bring people over, and all them cars parked out in the neighborhood. Why they gonna call the police? You can't even enjoy it. We don't got nothing to lose right here, and that's good. Because when you don't have nothing to lose, there's nothing to fear. You worry about holding to your little measly job that you hate. Only reason you like that because of fear, and we're gonna get to that coward man in a second. Let's jump on down to. Um, uh, Second Ezra, I'm sorry, let's go to Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 55. So we organize in this war room, brothers. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Mm -hmm. As for the other people, which also come from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. So, I mean, damn, these people, this, this green black... What's the other guy? Um, um, the one, who, you know, no, not green black. The other one, the one who's always chasing the camps around. Yeah, that that mongrel, that mongrel right there. 
this to me. Haman. These people God reputed as nothing. So what does that mean if they're nothing? We are something. We are something important to God. The one that he's reputed as nothing, read on. But be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Man, these people, that's how I look at them. They are nothing. They became lords over us. How do you think they became lords over us? By war. They took it. And their war just wasn't a physical war, which that was a big part of it. They warred on the minds of our people also. They understood that we have to change their mind and way of thinking. That a black woman would find value in being black and blonde hair. Would be in black and bleaching their skins. To hate themselves. We wore a war against these men and thinking it's all right to be a ladies' man, to be a baby daddy and a baby mama. They've put it in music and on television. That's another war that they have fought. Now, mind you, the people that did that to us, God said on nothing. So how do we let that stand? An ever for that ain't nothing is a Lord. You all all right with that? I look at them animals, which they are, beast, a lord over me? Man, listen, I've got nothing to lose. I want it all. Him too. The rest of you don't want shit. Oh. I'm sorry. Only two of us that want it all. I want it all. I got a person that ain't nothing over me. That God don't care about or love is over me, blot. You not angry? It's a hard crowd, boy. Maybe she had Kevin Hart over here. Maybe he'll, he'll get more out of these people. You not angry? Yes, sir. I guess I got to do the echo thing for them to do. So next time I ask a question, I want you guys on three, right? right. Between the lights not synced and the crowd not synced, hey, listen, boy, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, this is a tough crowd, boy. I feel like I'm in Vegas on the stage. Read on. Verse 58. But we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? That's a good question. Why, why, why? Because we sinned against God, that's why. But we could get it back. So right now, the heathen, the wicked got the earth. We should be infuriated and making a plan of war. How do we get back what belongs to us? What's the game plan? What city do we hit next? What doctrine do we destroy next? Job 9.24. All of you men, all of you men who are soldiers, let me, show, let me see the soldiers, raise your hand. MOV and soldiers, raise your hand. All of you should move as soldiers but got the mind of a bishop. Got the mind of a bishop. Calculating. Put your hands down. Tell them that. You can talk. I think what you just said just go over their heads. Bishop said, yes, you're a soldier, but you have to have the mind of a bishop. In other words, you got to think like a bishop. You got to think like you are the one over all I see. That's what he's saying. That's some heavy stuff. You have to have the mindset. What is next? In other words, 
a bishop, the leader, he's a general. He's taking, he's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about for the people. He make decisions for the people. He come up with ideas for the people. He come up with ways to make the people's lives a little easier. He come up with ways to express the gospel. Those are the thoughts of a bishop. And a bishop never sleep eight hours a day. I'm eight hours a night. I'm just telling you all. He lose sleep because he's worried about his people. He loves his people. That's how we got to think. That's how all of you got to think. Just imagine if all of us thought like that. Now, I know there's a learning curve because you need experience in life. But there's enough information out there for you all to glean from. There's enough information to learn how to navigate and how to move. Here's one simple way. I'm going to help all of you social media thoughts. I'm in love with the backspace. If you don't know what to do, just do this. Do what you see Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasap, myself, the deacons, and the captains are doing. Whatever we do, do the same thing, and you're good. Don't think out the box. Was it not here? See, I'm not, I am going to take a shot because I'm petty. That's not, that's not, no, listen, Atlanta, I'm t yeah, maybe I'm looking at me. <laughs> this is not my words, but I'm just going to repeat Greenleaf, but he hear, me, hear me out. Wasn't it here at Greenleaf where we had a brother that was like, because I thought it's down, I can't read the history no more of the Bible. I'm like, yo. yo. He was distraught. I'm like, God, this guy is a feeble-minded brother. Okay. They have the mind of a bishop. Oh, you, you, you're justifying? You, you, you're co-signing him? So what you just said, to do, put the mic up. Go ahead. Come in. One, two. Greenleaf. <laughs> okay. How young was he? A year? No, how many years in the body? Oh, no, no, no. He ain't get no pass. No, come on. Stop. I'm like, come on. You got to be joking. Nah, man. For you sisters, if you're not sure what to do, just look what the senior women do. I hope they're in order. I hope, nobody, I hope no senior women do something stupid. We at war. Do you understand social media? It's one of the weapons Esau has in his arsenal to use. Do you understand he takes in information, data, and he can look at your, your social media page and, and he can tell. He'll look at it on a macro level and sit back and he can tell you exactly who you are. You know, that's a social engineer. Social engineering, right? Yeah. Uh, tool that he uses to know how to how to work on the minds of people. So for you brothers and you sisters, but you brothers that's on social media and you are like this on TikTok and Instagram and he sees that finger flutters for 15 minutes straight and you checking that big booty girl out here and that big breast woman here and that crotch shot right there and then now he starts sending you more of that stuff. That's the game, buddy. You get on here talking about I want to kill people. You you got to be you got to be crazy. Have the mind of a bishop. We're calculating. Not saying that we don't make mistakes, but we're calculating because of experience. All you got to do is this mirror. Very simple. Very simple. What did I ask for before? Job nine twenty four. Read that real quick. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So we know that's Esau, right? The earth is given to this hand. It was given, now, we, now we try to take it back out of his hand. This is the condition of the battle. The wicked got the earth, and how do we get it back? Be ready for the reward of the kingdom. The kingdom is rulership back on earth. And guess what? You can call us a hate group, but I ain't never killed nobody. I ain't never lynched nobody. I ain't never plotted to murder nobody. I ain't never made a bomb. Only bomb I ever had was gas. <laughs> it could be deadly, right, Paulia? But I mean, that's another story. So, How the hell, Bishop Yawasop said this one time, how the hell you 
rape, rob, murder us, inflicted all type of demonic behavior against us. And then when we speak out and push back, like we don't want that to happen to us no more, you call us a hate group. Man, miss me with that. Man, listen, you got me mixed up. How the hell, you got me afraid to, to speak the truth that you have raped, robbed, and murdered the world. Not forget just me, the whole world. And I can't say it. I'm the bad guy. Well, you know what? I am the bad guy. I'm all right with that. What you going to do? Lock us up? Kill us? It ain't going to stop this movement. This movement doesn't stop. I don't care what plan you think you got, Esau. It ain't going to work. It ain't, I'm telling you. It's prophesied for you to fall. We know you don't believe in the Bible, but we don't need you to believe in the Bible. We need to convince our people to believe in the word of God. That's what we got to do. We ain't worried about <laughs> with you. Give me um, give me second Ezra. Uh, no, give me a second Ezra 757. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 57. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Do you understand that this is the condition of the battle? We no longer get the kingdom just like that. We got to fight for it. It's a battle. A battle is a war. But we ain't fighting with guns. We're not fighting with knives. We got a weapon that's going to tear down this whole earth, and it's a Bible. It's, the, it's our book that God, that's why, what's that again, um, vocab? You think we, man, we don't care what you think. Man, you're so, in, you are no more important than the boil on my backside right now, dude. You don't, you don't mean nothing. Like, we got to entertain you. And for you Israelite groups that sit down and be trying to go back and forth with them, you bet, man, come on, man. You guys are playing yourself. I'm telling you straight up. That dude's insignificant. He ain't nobody. Like, we, like, we, like, you deserve our audience. Like, we have to entertain you and explain something to you. We're not here for you. Only way you're going to get my attention, Voclap, if you come to me right now and say, you ready to put on chains. And I'm like, oh, yeah? I got I to gotta mow. I got a lawn for you to mow. Don't need you. I tell Esau, I'm sorry, I'm venting now. Esau really be thinking like he really got preeminence. Like, we got to explain ourselves to them. Like, they deserve an answer. Read on. Verse 58. I'm never going to get to That this. if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Right. It says that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. If you get overcome by this world, if this world takes you and controls you through whatever means and weaponry he used, media, TV, money, women, whatever, sin, whatever it is, then you're going to suffer loss. But if you, but if what? But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. What is it that he said? The reward of the kingdom. So we got to fight. That's it. It's a fight. Now, if you're going to fight and you're not prepared, you, you're going to fight to lose. So now we all know. Let's establish. Is there a fight going to happen? Yes, is there a fight happening? Yes, so do you go to fight to get knocked out? Okay, so it makes no sense coming here and not really preparing yourself and being that righteous man and woman you're supposed to be. Because if that's the case, you're going to get knocked out. And if that's the case, you might as well just stay out in the world. And, you know, whoever been in a, in a race before, like run a race? Did you ever go in a race saying, I'm looking forward to coming last place? No. You run into win. So we know the playing field, what the condition of the battle is. You better prepare yourself, men. I'm telling you something. Many of us are going to lose our lives, lose our jobs. Some lose our wives. Amen. But I'm telling you something. It just is what it is. If you ain't built for that, then this ain't the place for you. This war room ain't for you. Ain't, who's here? Creflo? Who's, who's in Atlanta, the big pastor? Yeah, he right down the block somewhere. Jamal Bryant. Yeah. Go down the block down here. Here, we warriors. We here for war. We like it. We like it like that. We want it. We want it. We want all the smoke. Bring it all. Now, we saying that 
You better mean it. Because God said, I hear what you're saying. You said you want smoke, right? Okay. Some people talk, including myself, talk. God said, I'm going to check you on your words. Read on. Verse 59. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. So choose thee life that you live. So now here, what are we fighting for again we're talking about? We're talking about the kingdom. Do you understand what that means? Having what's at stake? What are we fighting for? How great a reward that God is offering us? Deuteronomy 11. And hey, listen, captains and deacons, you all can impart some of your wisdom if you feel free. All right? Uh, 1124. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 24. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Mm. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. Read on. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you tread upon, as he has said unto you. I believe that. I believe. He said, wherever I put my foot down, we put our foot down, is always. Now, that's a lot. So you got to expect Esau right now, the earth was given to him, right? He ain't going to let it go without a fight. And that's only makes sense. I understand that. The stakes are high. But God said, I, I put the fear of you on them, the dread of you. You're living through it right now. You're watching them. They try so hard to blackball us and not see us. Now they worried. They worry, trying to find a way, trip us up. We know right now you got agents in here. We know, we've been saying that for a while. Esau, listen, we got agents in your place too, you don't know. AD or SPLC, we tell we got people there you never know. And you know what? Some of them might look just like you. You think they could come and look like a black man like this? Nah. We got some of your sellout Edomites right there sitting with you right now. You would never know. I just gave you a little bit right there. <laughs> you don't know what we you don't know what we up to. And those and those Edomites that's with us, use we use as a tool. They know they're being used as a tool. They know they're going to go into captivity. They just want to be there to serve us and not die. So we place them in your places right there, sitting amongst you right now, bringing back information to us. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have told them that much. But anyway, you know now, you just never find them. They'd be the ones going hard. Is that my coffee right there? Thank you very much. They think they're the only ones who know how to play this game, dude. You don't know who you're dealing with, boy. You've been with the sons of God. <laughs> okay, identify your enemies. Neutralize your enemies. Now, let me say about the enemies. Like I said before, we know we got people here that spies. Because the first thing we got to do is we got to deal with the enemies within. Sometimes we know, I'm telling you, there's sometimes we know some people in here and we know who you are. We don't know all you, we know some of you are. And we want you to stay right where you're at. Because we use you for a tool also. you never raise up in no place ready right here. We'll keep you in a box. There's layers and rooms you can be in here in this body, but you ain't never in the right place at the right time here, the right things and what we're doing. We ain't stupid. I'm going to share some of these conversations that I'm not privy to, and I'm a bishop. Don't utter everything to everybody. Certain people know certain things for certain reasons. They got certain clearances for certain reasons. That's how you keep this thing safe. You understand it, men? When y'all when y'all grow up and I'm to spiritually grow up, y'all gonna learn how we how do we move. Not everybody's in everything. It's on a need to know basis. Let's go. Step two: neutralize your enemies. Acts twenty verse twenty eight. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Mm. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, 
not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. That's why you have some men in here. They people come in here and they lie wait in the body to draw away disciples after them, to cause disruption. So now that we know that, that this is one of their tools, why would anybody fall for that? You all heard that. Whenever you see somebody in the body trying to pull people aside and draw with people, you know that's the devil. But some of you people, some of you will be simple and get fall for that. Do you understand saying to sit back and have people here and see some people disgruntled? Something happened to them. They were corrected. They might have even been done wrong by one another. And like, hey, I heard what happened to you, man. I'm praying for you. I know things are bad. I know I feel the same way too, you know, sometime, man. If you have time, take my number. And you all be stupid and fall for that stuff. It's the same way you have you be having problems with your wife and then Satan send that chick with them hips. They said, Oh, you all right? I know how you feel. You're like, she knows. She loves me. Satan so be sliding you up. Most High would allow that to happen to see which men among us is approved. Who stay focused? I'm telling you, ain't nobody can come to mind. That don't, that don't work on me. <laughs> Anybody know me? You say things to me, I'll repeat it out loud. I'm like, yeah, yeah, guess what he just said? And I look at you and I look at them. Let's, let's see if he about that, what he just said. Don't do that to me. I'm warning you, don't never do that to me. That ain't never going to work with me. Nope, nope, nope. We don't. Verse 31. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day. He kept on warning. I'm telling you, there are going to be wolves amongst us, people not sparing a flock. We had that in 18. People was after me, and they said, Tam, we're going to tear this whole thing apart. All IUIC. It got, it got beyond me now. It's destroy IUIC. Not sparing a flock. Where are they today? In the wind? Doing nothing? Bill and nothing? Only time will tell. Sit back. Let it play itself out. Some people got fooled and jumped on the bandwagon and then realized that bandwagon didn't have wheels. That bandwagon is still sitting in 2018 doing nothing. Sucks to be you. You know. Verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And now, brethren, I command, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. So what does it tell you? Be careful you don't get pulled away and you lose your inheritance because you got spies and people in here that's out to destroy you. The word of God was supposed to build you up to know that grievous wolves are going to come in here, not sparing a flock. He said, I warned you for three years. I'm telling you night and day, be careful. They're in here. Right now, they're in this room. I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, we know for a fact some of them who they are. And we're not doing anything. We're sitting back. We'll get to you when we're ready to get to you. Some of you sisters, we know. We just waiting. Because your job is to remove some of these pieces in here that don't belong here anyway. I hope y'all could I hope y'all could read what I'm saying. For those that are faithful here and, and you here for the right reasons, I know you could read what I I hope you could read what I'm saying. Because the ones that's not here for the right reason, they reading it. They know what I'm saying. And I'm trying not to look at them right now. <laughs> I'm trying to look at everybody but them. Amos 3, 3. See, because of dividing the body, they understand that. If we can keep them dividing, they can't grow. We got to keep them at odds. We got to cause schisms in the body. We got to disrupt this thing. Amos 3 and 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. 
Can two walk together except they be agreed? Mm -hmm. Can can they? No, they can't walk together except they be agreed. Matthew 12, 25. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. He said what? Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Read on. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Shall not stand. So Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided, excuse me, divided against itself is brought to desolation. That's why it's imperative that we don't allow that to happen to here. To divide us. And anybody come with that spirit? We get them out of here quick. Coming here supplanting. Grievous wolves not sparing the flock. And then if you tolerate that, you a traitor yourself. Why would you put your hand to build this body in Christ and let somebody come in here? If you don't even say nothing, you a traitor. If you sit back and have people murmuring, murmuring in your ear and you don't say nothing, you a traitor. People sit in this body right here that listened and heard people speaking against leadership, speaking against, and didn't say nothing. You a traitor too. They're trying to destroy what you put your hard-earned dollar, time, and effort into building, and you allow that to happen? Not on my watch. You can't do that with me. I keep on saying to warn you, don't ever come at me like that. Never. Never work. I ain't simple like that. If you're really about that life, just step right now and say, yeah, I'm about that life, and I respect, oh, damn, he about it. Don't talk, don't you never pull me in secret trying to talk to me. Not even as a young man, I was like that. That disloyal, 10, uh, Matthew 10, 36, that disloyal man. Yeah. You see that scripture Bishop just read? Uh, that scripture go really, really deeper. That a kingdom, Christ said, a kingdom that's against, it. Uh, read that again. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, uh -huh. every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. So let's talk about this kingdom. I'm talking about America. Because some of you think Republican is different than Democrat. That's, according to that scripture, that's not true. you thinking Catholic is different than Christianity. You're thinking Seven Adventists is different than uh, the Pentecost church. That's not true. They all in it together. And you know how heavy that is? This scripture actually go back to the war between Jacob and Esau. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying not to go deep with y'all, but that's what this go to. What you got to understand is everything Esau set up is against you, including social media. That's what, that's what I'm trying to explain to y'all. Esau, the United States government got the biggest database in the world they're collecting everything that's a kingdom you think that just this kingdom just wanted itself no they got this stuff in place for a reason a kingdom that's divided cannot stand some of you think you vote for president you vote for congressman you 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 crazy that's why they call it a kingdom did you ever see a kingdom where they vote for a king no the kingdom passed from king to king. America is no different. Stop thinking you vote count this up. That's what Cross is telling you. Why would remember when Cross was Cross was talking about what? Rome. Cross was in Rome, right? During that time, Rome was a kingdom. It passed from. That's why, why would Cross use the word kingdom? Why would anybody anybody have an idea? Why would Cross use the word kingdom? He's telling you we are in a kingdom. You don't vote for a king. Who the hell going to vote for Christ? The scripture said, we're going to take the kingdom. The scripture didn't say they're going to vote for us. Oh, go ahead. Get ready. They're going to vote for you. Crazy. If you're waiting for them to vote for you, you'll you never get no kingdom. The, king, the scripture said, God is going to give us the kingdom. We're going to take it. You don't vote for a kingdom, brother. You take it. That's what, that's what Bishop said earlier. There was a war. They went. They took the kingdom. That's what happened. They took the kingdom. Guess what? We're going to take the kingdom back. Don't tell a Christian that. He's going to say, 
We're going to sing our way into the kingdom. Let's all go. Ready? Let's go. We shall overcome. <laughs> yeah, if you caught in the church today, man, God bless you. You a dummy. In 2023, you in the church. Come on, man. You ain't built for this. You, 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 you are built to be a slave forever. Uh, we ain't looking for you. We trying to get you up out of that whole house, the church. You gonna sing? You gonna sing your way to the kingdom? Okay, ready? Acapellos, ready? On three, we're gonna go. No justice, no peace. <laughs> I know you young people, you young generation ain't going for that, right? You tired of hearing that old church sermon, book? Foolishness. Tired of hearing that crap. Yeah, uh, Matthew's ten thirty six. Back to what you're talking about, Deacon. Watch this. Matthew chapter... We're going to come back to that kingdom part because I, I like the part you made about a kingdom. Watch this. Read. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Oh, what? So, remember I told you first, we got to deal with the traitors amongst us, the little people in here. And our, and our families, you got people, your, your foes going to be those that's closest to you. A man's foes. Give me that Psalm 27 and 10 real quick. Watch this. Psalm 27, verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. We don't. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Because of my what? Enemies. We don't. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me. Because what is risen up? False witnesses are risen up against me. So please, the people closest to you, and I'm, when I, it says father, mother, but I'm talking about in this body here. You have people that's going to rise up against you to destroy. They become your enemies. Your enemies are not just the other nations. Sometimes you got enemies within. You got traitors, sellouts. That's going to sit amongst you. Read on. And such as breathe out cruelty. Mm -hmm. And such that breathe out cruelty. Man, this, boy, boy, boy. I remember this. Read on. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Read on. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Because if you're a warrior, you better be of good courage. You better be cheerful. Don't you like a good, well, I don't know if anybody, don't you like a good fight? You know what I mean. I don't want to go into all that because I don't, I don't want to make this a cardinal class. But you know what I'm trying to say. Good fight. I expect Esau to fight with everything he had. I already know the outcome of how it's going to end. It's a fixed fight. Can't win. Kill us, we're coming back. I'm going to say this and I don't want you to answer this, but I want you to think. How many of us really believe that if we die, that we're going to come back. Don't answer it. Just think about it. How many of Ray believe that if we put to death, physically put to death, that we're going to come back to life? Wrap yourself around that thought. Because when you really believe that, you know something, you're dangerous. That's why you think they have so much a hard time dealing with Ishmael. Ishmael, if they die, I strap this bomb to me. I die, I come back and I got 70 virgins. Like, oh, where's the bomb at? Now, we know that ain't real. We know we got the true power. But the point is, that's why it's hard for them to deal with these people because their ideology, you can't break the way they think. They knew to break us. They knew to break our minds. And, re and like, like Deacon says, whatever they tell us, that's what is reality to us. And our job now is to change the minds of people the way they think. That's our weapon, the word of God, to change the mold minds of the people. We are dangerous. It's easy, it's easy if all we talk about is just believe in Jesus. But if we start changing, reforming the way you live your lives, now they're worried. Look, our, 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 our logo, IUIC. They start making horror apparel for the women. To put it out there, hopefully snag a couple of your stupid women out there. It says that you ain't, no, I ain't doing that, no. You says they ain't going to play no more holes, right? Come on, man. And you, I'm not serious. You says they ain't going to play no more holes, right? And you ain't tired of getting ran up into and nobody making or taking care of you? Yeah. 
Ain't you tired of getting ran up into it and nobody taking care of you? Don't you deserve more? Okay. <laughs> so you say, you got, I need some more. I, mean, I just didn't feel it. Ain't you tired of getting ran up into and nobody taking care of you? Don't you deserve more? Okay, there we go. I'll tell you a couple times. They're trying to make IUIC horror power for you to put on. That ain't y'all, right? No, My, say, who the hell you think I am? Where we left off at? Read on. Verse uh, 14. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. The Lord's going to strengthen. Be of good courage. Don't give up. Don't give in. Your foes are going to be people that's going to be closest to you. But you don't get pulled off a track. Watch this real quick. Go from that real quick. I want to go to the book of Jude 1. Give me verse 4. Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into the lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you have people that crept in amongst us, unawares, unassuming, that crept in amongst us, who were before of all ordained to this condemnation. They were sent here for that purpose. From old, they was ordained to be traitors. And sellouts. So the rest of us can see them, identify them, and know, keep away. That we understand how serious this battle is, this fight is. You got people that's in here getting spies that come in here with whole families, wives, and children, and they on the low, playing the part. Trying to bring in damnable heresies to destroy, to pull us away from this. This is the battle. This is the condition of the battle, brothers and sisters. But he gives a sign to identify who they are. And we got to root them up out of here. Or leave them in a corner so insignificant that they have no real power to do anything. Because ain't none of us in here stupid, right? Fall for that. Nehemiah 6. So Captain um, Amaziah pulled this last night. This was, a, this was a fire precept. I like this one right here. Nehemiah 6, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mahatnahabil, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple. Wait a second. I, I Repeat that. Who was that? <laughs> I, I, I think you pronounced it right or wrong. I mean, say it again. Mahedabim. No, no, start, reverse turn again. Let's start again. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delilah. I'm telling you, they sit right, am they sit right amongst us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you again. He looked at like, he went this. No nigga ain't talking about me. <laughs> Go ahead, read on, read on, read on. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mahedabel, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple. There you go. Come on, let's go talk over here privately. Man, if anybody fought for that in 2023, man, you can never, I'm telling you, you never do that to me. You, I would embarrass you. I'm telling you, I would embarrass you. Oh, come on, let's talk over here. Now, nah, talk openly. How would you going to tell me over that you can't tell me? Hey, did you love me? How are you going to tell me? We got to talk privately. Like I'm some puppy. You go, come on, let's go. Man, nigga, please. You got this. Read. For they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. He tried to put fear on him. Read on. In verse 11. And I said, should such man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I tell you, that man was an enemy. He said, listen, listen, let me tell you something, man. They're going to come kill you. What are you trying to tell me? I should flee? 
You trying to put a spirit of fear on me? You sitting amongst us and you trying to put fear on me to do the Lord's work? I don't know, brothers. We should be going out to camp, man. Maybe we should rethink. Ooh. Yeah, ooh. We had, we had a brother one time said he wanted us to have and written, I'm telling you, some tough people is crazy. He wanted a written letter with an IUIC letterhead on it um, that we were liable if the camp equipment messed up stuff in his trunk of his car. <laughs> I tell you, you can't make this stuff up. I said, leave him home. That dude don't, don't stay home. We don't need you, buddy. We're, I'm okay. We're okay. Jesus is okay. I, he doesn't need you. <laughs> he ain't looking for you, buddy. You're not, you, you're not the one. And you know who told him to do that? Who you think told him to do that? <laughs> Bring it out. Bring it out. Woo. Love to be a fly in that war in the house and see how those conversations go down. Read on. Verse 11. And I said, should such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? Mm -hmm. I will not go in. I will what? I will not go in. That's right. And lo, I perceive that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced his prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. So Therefore, So he was hired by who? Tobiah and Sambalot. This dude, this dude was paid off. He was bought off. You got some of these dudes that will sell yourself for money. Some of you do what you will sell at your own brothers for profit. I guess, I guess traders, you, you reconcile on your mind and you all right with it because maybe you think this kingdom. But just imagine being that one. I always think about Judas selling out Christ for money. And then when all reality came flooding back in, for you who's in 2018 that joined yourself unto the enemy, man, when Christ returned, ooh, ooh. How do you sleep at night? Is there not some kind of more? You know, Negroes on the street, there's ratchets though. They have, some, they still have some a nigger moral compass. Some, some well, yeah, let me take that back because I don't know. But some of them, you understand what I'm trying to say. Damn. Read on. Is that it? Verse, oh, where we verse we at? Uh, we're on thirteen. Bishop. Read on. Verse thirteen. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid, and do so and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report. That they might reproach me. We don't. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalot according to these their works. Mm -hmm. And on the prophetess Noadiah. Let's stop right there. I'm done. Jump up for that real quick. I want to go to Matthew 16. So in this war room, we, we identifying the enemy. And we're, we're dealing with the enemies within first before we deal with the other nations. Because we got to understand and neutralize those ones that's amongst us. We got to make sure they have no power. Make sure we expose the ones that need to be exposed. Because unless we have that right, it, a house divided itself cannot stand. All right, let's deal with this real quick. Matthew 16, verse 25. Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. That's some of you, brother, you're trying to save your life. You're going to lose it. Read on. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You understand what Christ is asking of us? He said, if you try to save your life in this world, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, lose all your riches and whatever you think is important to you, for my sake, he said, I'm going to give you life. Remember, he said, wherever your foot placed down is yours. Well, he ain't go Remember, Christ is a black man. Black people don't do nothing for nothing. He ain't giving no kingdom for nothing. I'm just going to give you the kingdom because you, you know. No, you got you to gotta put it all on the line, and I'll give you everything. Only reason you would do that is you got to have faith. You got to believe. If you don't believe what you're reading, and you're reading this Bible, and you're going through it, and you don't believe it, I don't know why you're not I don't understand why you're doing this for. Any one of us. To read this Bible and do all that we're doing and don't believe the words of God, don't believe. I believe, listen to me, for the listening audience out there, the prophecy said there's a big black man that's going to come out of the sky. And I believe that with angels. And his garment's going to be in red dipped in blood of y'all blood. And then we're going to run across you like stubble. 
like flames over stubborn and destroy all that's left of you. And then we're going to take the rest of y'all that's left and we're going to take you back to Jerusalem. You're going to rebuild everything nice for us. And then we're going to put you on chains. And after a thousand years, Esau, you're going to be off the earth. I believe that. So don't believe that, but I'm supposed to believe in Santa Claus? Nigga, please. I, I'm crazy for believing, but I'm supposed to believe in Santa Claus. I'm supposed to believe that you all love me. <laughs> nah, 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 no, 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 no. I'm supposed to believe there's good white people. Well, if there is, they're not enough for you. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. Y'all were bred to be the way you are. That's what the Bible says. And I'm the bad guy for saying it. I wear that jacket, no problem. It's cool. I know you're angry. This is what it is. Get rid of me, kill me. There's somebody right after me that's going to say the same thing. I'm going to be doing a whole lot of killing there because everybody think the same way. We don't trust you. We'll never trust you. There's no reason for us to ever trust you. You never did anything that was trustworthy. Green Blatt. Read. Where we left off at? Uh, verse 26, sir. Mm -hmm. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Yeah, what are you going to profit if you gain the whole world? You got all the money. You got all the riches your heart can, t you can design this world. And trade for your soul? Dude's trying to make it in this world, in this rap world, some of you give up your backside, your more, all kind of stuff for money? Damn. Nah. So that just can't part. What's that guy, what's it, show me that picture of the guy with the pink on, what's the name again? Yeah, show me, show me that, Jonathan Majors. You got, the, you got that picture I'm talking about? I know I'm dropping the last minute IT. Jonathan something. Okay. All right. There we go. Put it up. Now, I know I've seen him a lot of movies recently, right? Yeah. You guys see that? Come on, man. Ju -ju -ju Judah. Come on, man. More fire. Come on. You know, you know, behind that picture, you know he's going to get a whole lot of roles now. But ain't there something that's deep down inside of you that say, I am a man. I want to be treated as a man. You can never in a million years get me to dress like that. The hell no. I mean, what, what are you trying to express? Lips pooted out with pink on something like that. Legs, come on, man. When do you grab your nuts and act like a man? Damn, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord. Come on, man. What tribe is he again? What tribe is he again? Okay, listen, we're not going to make, listen, listen, listen. Listen, stop that. We're not going to get petty. And no, no, no. first, we're not going to lie. We're not, he's not Benjamin. Listen, let's don't lie. Let's do, let's do the fact of the matter. He's Judah, but I'm not going to try to hold to all you Judahites either. Give me uh, Rihanna and that um in the sim. I will give you one, Judah. I give you one because I'm fair across the board. I'm fair. I'm fair across the board. But don't start lying, Judah, and be like he's he's Judah. Don't t call him Benjamin. Here's Benjamin. We'll give you one. We'll give you one. There you go. And then give me the one, the real one. Come on, man. Come on, man. Simp, 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 and baby simp, baby simp, baby simp, daddy simp, they baby simp, daddy simp, baby simp. Come on, man. Just imagine you, imagine you at the photo shoot with the mind you have now. And they said, okay, you guys stand there, some half a, you can say homosexual, on, this is half a homosexual, and they say, okay, so we're about to take the pictures now, and we're going to be, and you say, hold his hand, and you stand behind her. What you ever like, what, what you say to me? Yeah, drop yourselves, make yourself. I can, I'm trying. I'm crazy because in my mind, I'm, I try to play out my mind. You talking to me like that? What the fuck you just said to me? Shut the fuck up. 
Get the Paul, you get behind me, man. Tell all the goddamn baby. You trying to tell me where I stand at? I can't imagine nobody to that shit to me. I just that's not my reality. Look at this guy. Now show me the real image of you know which one it is? The one with the brother with the with the baby, the the, the statue. Don't talk. Y'all know um I think it's on social media. It's on Bishop's page. Yeah, it's, I'm all over the place. But right it's now. the stone. I'm it's the stone. Um, I'm getting the distracted. Stone when you find it, just put it. I'm getting distracted. Where I leave off at? Verse 26. Uh, let me go back. Read that again. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You lose yourself. You got. You lose your soul. You lose your manhood to profit. I know for him, he thought it was a come up. He got Rihanna, Fenty, they balling out, eating scrimps and all that stuff. But then you got to play, you got to play second fiddle to your wife. How do you sleep? I would have insomnia. I could never sleep. My rod wouldn't work. I'm telling you, I, I can't do that. She leading me. You men built like that? Any of you in here built like that? Because if you are, this ain't the place for you. You don't belong in the war room. Send you over there to the daughter of Sarah's side. Damn. Get a head wrap. Ladies, you want men like that? No, yeah, right. Yeah, right. So nah, you all don't want no men like that, right? You want warriors, godly men. Five of you do. The rest of you don't want what you want. I know you ladies want a man that's, that's rugged and rough, but you can control him. But we ain't built like that. And that's not how we built. Hey, hey, send it you can't ask button. for a lion and then get mad when he roar. No. You know, where we at? You got it. It's in the online class. Take a look in there. Read on. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What you going to give in exchange for your soul? <laughs> I'm telling you. Nothing. 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 I'm not giving nothing in exchange. Nothing. Every last nothing. We taking all. I'm not giving nothing. I'm taking, giving nothing. That's how we, there we go. That's how we used to be. She in your arm, you hold her up. You turn to that other step. Now, hell no. Leading the way. Got Rihanna. Man, you better go in the kitchen and fry some chicken. Telling me, man, miss me. Let's go on. Sirach, Sirach 4. I'm taking all, giving nothing. We taking all, giving nothing. Right, men? Yes, sir. We ain't sharing our space. We ain't negotiating nothing. We take it all, giving nothing. Yes, all you could do is try to stop us. That's all you could do. What acts for? Uh, Sirach, 4 and 20. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4, verse 20. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy no, soul. No, 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 no. Is this, is this Sirach? Strive for truth unto death. 28, okay. Read that for me. You said verse 28? Yeah. Yes, sir. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4, verse 28. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. You know what that means? We take it all and give it nothing. And who's going to fight for us? I want to hear it. The Lord going to fight for us. That's why we got the trick back. We got the Lord in our corner. We can't lose. Only way you lose if you fearful full of heart. You ain't don't see this as a war. You see this as a social club where you can come and hang out. Sip some wine and talk some crap. Who's better, Jordan or LeBron? <laughs> Stupid conversation. You know Jordan or LeBron don't give a crap about none of us in here? Yeah, yeah I'm telling you because Jordan is in his career because he's motivated, man. And LeBron, I'm telling you, I'm now you wrong. Let me tell you, let me get this video on YouTube and show you. Oh, gosh. Read it one more time. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. And the Lord is going to fight for you. First Maccabees 1. What time is it? First Maccabees 1. I want verse 41 to 43. 
1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites can send it to his religion. We had a lot of Israelites that said, you know what? We're going to leave all laws, leave all God and, what, and all heritage, and we're going to consent. We're going to, we're going to change from what we know, from what we've been doing, because another man told us to. Because he threatened us with death. Threatened us with prison. We're going to change. Read on. Yea, many of the, of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. They broke the laws of God. Read on. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. And jump, for, on, jump on down to verse 52. Verse 52. Then many of the people were gathered unto them, to wit, everyone that forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land. And many people fell for it, read on. And drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for succor. Secure. Secure. But guess what? Some of them Israelites wasn't going for it. It got so bad that the city was overrun with a bunch of sellouts. That the ones that was about it said, yo, we got to get up out of here right now because we don't got no wins. But they wasn't going for it. Now try to envision <laughs> what was happening back then. They were killing the people. Literally killing them. The dragon was wroth. But some of the ones that was real, they was like, nope. Nah. Y'all can sell out. Y'all can sell out this whole body. Imagine the community, this whole body of brothers you came up with. And you sell them out. Because you gave it to the enemy for riches or whatever crap you did it. But some of us is hard body. We ain't selling out. Nah. We ain't built like that. Read on. Verse 54. Now no, jump, I'm sorry. Jump down to verse 62. Verse 62. How be it many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Yeah, they was like, now nah, we fully resolved. I don't care. I don't care what you bring it on. Now nah, I'm cool. I'm telling you, I'm not doing it. Whatever comes, just comes. That's what we're telling you, Esau. Whatever comes, just comes. We ain't worried. It is going to be what it is. But we never trim in our ways. We're never going to stop speaking the truth. We're never going to tell who the evil on the earth is. That's our job. You do what you got to do. But we're going to do the Lord's of God because God is going to strengthen us. And if we die doing it, well, we just die. I'm at the bottom anyway, God damn it. That's right. You all got us afraid. We resolve. We ain't doing that. Nah. So young, I'm telling you, young generation, y'all young and fit for this battle. Hell, we giving in for. So you can hang out with, uh, I don't want to call them by name, but I just... You know me, I don't got no filter. So you can hang with Jay-Z and these people. I don't give a damn. Man. Repent or whatever. Beyonce. Man, I give a damn about no Beyonce. I give a damn about none of you sellouts. If you repent all praises, we roll. I know you don't care about me either, so it's all right. I ain't trying to make it in this world. I'm just buying my time. That's right. Until my day come. Now all you could do is try. And see what you're going to get. We're going to teach the word of God. That's and that's right. it. I don't care who don't like it. We are at war. Read. Verse 63. Wherefore they chose rather to die. What? Wherefore they chose rather to die that they might not be defiled with meats. I'd rather die than celebrate 4th of July. Yeah. Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Kwanzaa pick. I'd rather die. I'm not, if you ever, I'm giving the all word that can hear me. If you ever see me turning back to a church to go do communion or Easter, whatever, do me a favor, take a small caliber pistol, put it to the back of my ear, and put me out of my goddamn misery. I would have to be retarded, crazy, out of my mind. I'm giving you all permission. Help me. 
in a church. Are you crazy? If I'm ever in a church to rebuke it. Going back to my, hey, let's go barbecue for fourth of July. You come on, man. Ah, my stomach is turning to even think that would ever become me again. That's how you also feel to go back to what? Now, choosing rather to die, read on. And that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died. And there was very great wrath upon Israel. So they died. So they chose to die. Second Maccabees 4. So they died. I want to see brothers and sisters come out these classes and they, they resolve is strong. They believe what they read. Their spirit is strengthened. Seeing your spirit strengthened in this word strengthens my spirit to say, okay, there's men that think like-minded. I always say that, and I know you captains heard me before, said this before, and deacons heard me say before. Let me men's heard me say this before. In camp, anybody go to camp ain't about it, I'm telling you. Some of you brothers got to be built up. I get it. A lot of times you in camp, I'm telling you something, you better make, pay, keep your head on swivel because a lot of brothers there, they ain't right. I'm telling you. And they'll sell you. They'll, they'll turn their back and leave you there to fry. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Man, you better, your faith better be strong in God. When people be talking about it, be yoked. But inside, they, they petite. Read that for me. Second Maccabees 4, 7. Second Maccabees chapter 4, verse 7. But after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be high priest, promising unto the king by intercession 303 score talents of silver and of another revenue 80 talents. <laughs> Beside this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a, a place for exercise and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. So do you understand, this was a man that was amongst the body of Israel that was selling us out, offering the king's gift of money so he can build up pagan idols and traditions in the land. This man was a traitor. We got to neutralize them traitors amongst us. You're amongst all your people, and you're willing to sell us all out to bring about the white man's agenda. You make me sick. I can't stand you. I can't understand. Damn, read. Verse 9. <laughs> Beside this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen mm. and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Anti Antiochians, which, went, which when the king had granted and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. He, turned, he brought his people over to the Greekish fashion. He worked underhanded. Now, I'm trying to think in my mind, the righteous of us was there, the Maccabees and these men and women that were righteous, to see, yo, you think that, you know, you think people didn't know Jason? Damn, Jason, that damn, that dude sold us out. Damn, you, could you believe what he did? That dude is, God, he, yo, he working with the man, he working with the SPLC. He working with BBC. Damn, wasn't that dude sitting with us at Passover? For 10 years, you sell out. Verse 15. Verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. He loved the glory of the Grecians best of all. Jump to chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Let's read about Onias now. Second Maccabees chapter 3, verse 1. Now when the holy city was inhabited with all peace, and the laws were kept very well because of the godliness of Onias, the high priest, and his hatred of wickedness. Mm -hmm. It came to pass that even the kings themselves did honor the place mm -hmm. and magnify the temple with their best gifts. So this, this, listen, these other nations, they magnified what we was doing. Read on. 
And so much that Seleucus, king of Asia, of his own revenues, bear all the cost belonging to the service of the sacrifice. So the Lord put the spirit on, on this Edomite to bear the cost of the service of the temple. Read on. Verse 4. But one Simon of the tribe of Benjamin. On behalf of the tribe of Benjamin, I want to apologize to all the other 11 tribes that we had a sellout that sat amongst us. This Simon, this wretch, did what? Who was made governor of the temple, fell out with the high priest about disorder of, in the city. So he fell out with the high priest about disorder in the city. city was disorder. So him and the high priest had an issue. Read on. And when he could not overcome Onias. And when he was not able to have more per persuade Onias or overcome him. Read on. He got him to Apollonius, the son of Thracius, who then was governor of uh, Silo Syria and Phoenice, and told him that the treasury in Jer Jerusalem was full of infinite, infinite sums of money, so that the multitude of their riches, which did not pertain to the account of the sacrifices, was innumerable, and that it was possible to bring all into the king's hands. So do you understand? He had an issue with Onias. And because he could not overcome Onias, he sold out all Israel. He went to the Edomites and told them, listen, there's a whole lot of money there that's ain't just for the sacrifice that's sitting up there. He was privy to things, but because of his anger against Onias, didn't we see that at 18? Y'all don't remember that? Damn, you're going to tear down this whole body? Because you mad at one person? You got people here that will sacrifice all of us, destroy everything. That's why you got to neutralize them, make them insignificant, try to pull you aside. That's a bitter person. Man, I feel bad for that person. You got a bitter spirit, that's how you move? Man, you got a sad life. You a loser. You feminine as hell. You're going to tear down everything. It was other people's funds that was in that treasury too. People life savings. I don't give a damn. I'm mad at Nias. So I'm going to destroy everything. And I'm going to go to the enemy who we established the enemy and I'm going to join the enemy. Well, that means you're an enemy too, buddy. You ain't no different. You, as a matter of fact, you worse than him. He who he is. You, oof. We don't. Uh, you want what, me to go? What verse we at? All right, we just read verse 6. I uh, dropped it. I'm good with that. Sell out. Sirach 12, 12 and 10. We got to move a little faster now. Oh, gosh. Not even, I ain't going to get there. I forgot I'm talking to someone. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. What? Never trust thine enemy. Yep, never trust your enemy. And sometimes that enemy is, I'm, I'm, I know we talk about other nations, but when you read this chapter, this is talking about in Israel. Never trust your enemy. For like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So is his wickedness. Watch this. Go to Sirach 27, verse 21. Ecclesiastes, kiss, chapter 27, verse 21. As for a wound, it may be bound up. And after reviling, there may be reconcilement. But he that bereaves secrets is without hope. But the Bible says you got a, you got a friend, a brother's amongst you, that berates secrets, there's no hope for him. Other stuff can be fixed, but never trust an enemy. You sell us out, you can never trust them. Because there's too much to lose. We at war. How the hell are we going to say, oh, I'm sorry, you're going to let him back in? The nah, you can't do that, buddy. Not in war. You gave up vital information to the people that's trying to destroy the nation? You can never be brought back in the fold like that. Nah. The, the Bible says there's what for him? He that bereaves secrets is without hope. Without what? Without hope. He is without, he that bereaves secrets is without hope. What verse was that? Verse 21. Mm, read on. He that winketh with the eyes worketh evil, and he that knoweth him will depart from him. Read. When thou art present, he will speak sweetly and will admire thy words. But at the last, he will writhe his mouth. 
and slander thy saints. <laughs> Never trust your enemies. Read on. I have hated many things, but nothing like him. Ooh. For the Lord will hate him. So, well, okay now, let's establish. If God hate him, who am I to like him? I'm choosing the Lord. God said, I'm a, God said that trade, that sellout, God said, I'm going to hate them. You saw that the whole nation, the whole brotherhood, the whole family, children's wives, families, everybody, you sold them out because you was angry at him? You want to destroy everything? God said, I hate him. God said he's going to hate him. Nah, God said, we can't deal with that man. There's too much to risk. We at war. 2 Maccabees 10, 21. Second Maccabees chapter 10, verse 21. But when it was told Maccabeus what was done, he called the governors of the people together and accused those men that they had sold their brethren for money and set their enemies free to fight against them. Mm -hmm. So he slew those that were found traitors <laughs> and immediately took the two castles. What else were you supposed to do with them? What, else, what other choices did Maccabee have? You can't keep them alive. He said, I had, to, I had no choice but to slay them. They were traitors. God said he hated them. There are people that come and try to sell you for money. I said that before, and I'm going to say this again. If you sit in here and you listen to people slander one another, slander leadership, and you say nothing, you fall in the same boat with them. Do you understand that? If you out here and you communicating with those people that left the body, that has been put out the body, you a traitor. You ain't, you ain't part of us. Some of you live a secret life. Just know, secret or not, you a traitor and God hates you. He gonna get you. He gonna get you. Right here, sitting by people from 18, still dealing with them. You sell out, traitor, turncoat. Give me some more. No. <laughs> Bootsy. <laughs> sell out. How do you live with yourself, sell out? I know you look at yourself, you must make yourself sick to look at yourself. Broken. <laughs> uh, 1 Corinthians 11. <laughs> got no integrity. If you feel like that, then why don't you just leave with them? If that's how you feel, just leave with them. You're weak. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 18. No, no. Um, what was I thinking about? No, I'm sorry, Romans 16. I'm sorry. Romans 16, 17. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. What did God tell us to do? Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. God said to mark those people. You better recognize who they are. Mark them, identify them, put an X on their forehead, this dude right here. It's causing divisions. Read on. And avoid them. And what? And avoid them. Can I tell you, there's so many people here who do not believe that scripture. You know me, for the years, I'm like, I don't know how you can get another breakdown of that. Well, I don't, well, and here's the point. The people that's like that, you will not just come out open and say, I don't see what you're saying, and I disagree with you. You would sit here, and you'll be a spy and listen in on everything to go back to them. Whatever we say here openly, Trust me, this ain't, this is just, even this class, it's just for open. These are the conversations you'll never be privy to. It just ain't, just, this ain't the place for it. But I don't know how you got, what's the other breakdown? Why would you live a life like that? It says, do not leave, mark them and have no what? And mark and them. And avoid them. Read on. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. And avoid them. You know when it says avoid them, what it means? 
It means that person might be trying to reach you and you are purposely trying to avoid taking their calls. You know how you avoid them? You block their numbers. You don't answer their messages. You get them off of social media. You don't got to see them. You people don't be avoiding them. You be secretly. Listen, I saw up until last week or two weeks ago, some brother in the body still dealing with people from back in 18. I'm like, damn, what Bible do you read? Oh, you don't believe that because we said, you know, so you don't trust leadership. Okay, cool. So then why are you here for? You still sit here and listen to us. Read on. Verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, whoa. <laughs> read on. But their own belly. Well, then, you are, then you hated of God. Read on. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And they're able to now, guess what? Convince some of you simpletons to follow, follow that stuff. They deceive the hearts of the simple. That's why we got to sometime leave them here so we can figure out, okay, who are the, the weak-minded simpletons in here? Yeah, they're going to listen to this guy. This guy got no power. I mean, people have great plans. And, yeah, we're going to build. Man, please. I heard that story. Yeah, I've been hearing that story for Daniel the last roughly 20 years, people saying it. And I ain't never seen one do it. Come on. Bishop, you know what's funny is that in Romans 16, the brothers and sisters that don't believe it, that's actually always been in place. The difference is under Moses used to get stoned to put away that mm -hmm. evil. Mm -hmm. In Deuteronomy 13, it says that when somebody secretly entices you like that, it's to thrust you away from the Lord. We just read in Romans 16 because they love not Christ but their own bellies. It's saying the exact same thing. They don't follow Christ the same way in the Old Testament. They didn't follow the Lord either. The only difference is back then they used to kill you. Right. Now it's just put you away or avoid you. It's always been here. I don't see what the new breakdown is. Yeah, I don't yeah, get it. I, that's I don't it. Get it. If you can't do that, how do you think you're going to take down the nations? If, you, if that's a, you know, that friend is so much to me, so I'm like, you ain't built, this ain't, this, you, this ain't for you. I'm telling you straight, this ain't for you. Well, I don't understand. Well, don't, don't understand outside. That's all. This, this ain't for you, buddy. This ain't for you. You, you belong in church. You belong on church on Sunday. This ain't for you. Sorry to tell you something. You're going to run this race and don't get the kingdom. So you might as well just go out there and live your best life out there because this ain't the place for you. That to me, that don't seem very hard. I'm telling you something, I have no affinity to nobody. Not my wife, not my children. I, listen, I love them that love the Lord. And I try, I teach my wife and kids, you better feel the same way about me. This is about living forever. Living forever, loving you. <laughs> now, I could turn on, on, and don't, and don't think I'm playing some tough guy stuff, because I love. But my love is conditional. You ain't serving God, Who? Nah, I don't need, I could lose all of them. And God know I ain't playing. They could all go. Whatever. And I hope they feel the same way about me. Because they do, then we got a healthy relationship. This is all conditional, baby. It's all conditional. I don't have that. That don't, that means nothing to me. I'm with you. You doing right by God and we good. We, oh, we having a, I'm, we go ten toes down. You ain't doing it. I'll turn off like a light switch. Don't care. I don't hold, I don't have that emotion like loving you and uh, nah, please. You know that little kitty stuff. And you got that emotion like that? <laughs> and if you got that? No, yeah, we just mark your words before God. You gonna find out. Because I said it. I know God gonna mark my words, but I mean it. I ain't like that. <laughs> I ain't like that. Listen. Everybody can leave. I'll get me another. I'll get another. But not in this lifetime, because I wait for the kingdom. Because it's just, it ain't, it ain't all credit. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I want to serve the Lord. Rulership, dominion, the reward of the kingdom. Friend, come on, man. How do you compare? You must not believe. You must not believe. Second Thessalonians 3. We at war. We war for the souls of the people. We war for the kingdom. We want it all. We got to take some kind of losses sometime. 
real quick, give me um, three and six. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse six. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which you received of us. What's so hard about that to understand? What's the other breakdown that it could be other than withdraw yourself and then that's walking disorderly? Verse 14. Verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him. Have no what? Have no company with him that he may be ashamed. I don't know what's so hard. There's no other breakdown. It could be leave them alone. These men are enemies to what we're doing. They're not moving in the same direction. You understand, if they're not here moving in the same direction, if they cause some fences and they had to been put out, they are enemies. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. You got to really believe that, understand that, that there's the reason why God is having them in the situation they're in right now, because they're moving wrong. They're enemies. They're enemies to what God is building. You want to be on that side? I've seen people choose that side. I'm like, damn. You weak. You weak-minded. So we dealt with the enemies of our people. Identifying the enemies, all right? Go to Psalm. Now we're going to talk about Esau a little bit. And I'll, I'll come back to Esau. I'm going to touch some other stuff, but I'm going to come back to Esau next week so I can really go in with it about him being on enemy. Psalm 83 uh, to really do it some justice. Psalms 83, 1 1 through 12. Let's read this kind of quick. Yes, sir. Psalms 83, verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. The enemies. This enemies is talking about the other nations. uh, Nehemiah 5 and 9. Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 9. Also, I said, it is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? Our enemies. Again. Also, I said, it is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God? Ought you walk in the fear of the God? Because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? The heathens are the other nations. They are our enemies. So let's go back. This ain't talking about the enemies of our people. This is the enemies in Psalms 83 is the other nations. Uh, Psalms 83, verse 1 and 2 again. Psalms 83, verse 1. Keep not thou, keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemy, enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. The other nations have lifted their head. Read on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Thy enemies have taken crafty counsel against us, God. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And we're his hidden ones. Read on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Do you understand that's them at war with us? They've come together. They had a war room and said, listen, we need to cut these people off. A lot of these enemies were enemies amongst each other too. But they knew that, you know what? We worry about our problems. That's why Israel, as I thought, us, the nation of Israel, with these other groups, they don't even know how to even operate. That's why we got to stand independent of them. They, they, don't, they, they ain't there yet spiritually. Hopefully they'll come to that point, how to operate. Esau sit back and look at these, look at them, look at them. They, they, they fight about his name. They fight about multiple wives. They fight about, can you have prostitutes? Now these, that's why we don't even entertain them. Like we don't get involved because you guys, we're on a different page, a different chapter, and more than likely even in a different book from you. You, you guys are on lunch breaks. You guys, you're not even. So the point is, yeah, go ahead, talk. And you know what's crazy about what you just said is that when the when the other nations or the enemy want to attack us, they use their clips of videos to put with ours to make right. it look like we're saying something that we're not when it's the other camps that's seen it. That's how wicked and evil uh, these people are, man. But you got to give it to Esau. He used all the weapons around him that's available. Still for naught, but, you know, hey. But that's what said, that's what said these camps, man. They got to move differently. These other nations warred against each other. But they had one thing, one thing in common. We cannot allow these Israelites to stay in the laws of God. Or none of us are ever going to rise. So they came together and said, what do we do? You know what? We're going to oppress them over here in China. 
We're going to oppress them over here in Rome, in Italy. We're going to oppress them in America, in France. Okay, we, I can't stand your guts. Okay, I don't know that, but you're going to make sure you oppress them niggas over there, right? Okay, we're going to come together. Cut them off from being the Jews. That's how you know we the prize. We the prize. So now we know we got all these enemies, all these nations against us. Are we not going to get ourselves right and prepare for war? Are we not going to be each other's brother's keeper and make sure that we move with a tight, well-oiled machine powered by Christ? Read. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. Mm -hmm. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Gibal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assur also is joined with them. They have hoping the children of Lot, Selah. Read. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, Jabin, Jabin at the brook of Kaisan, which perish at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb, like Zeb. Yea, all their princes as Zeba and Zalman, Zalmana, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. And they said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God. The houses of God or the children of God. We're the houses of God. Read that in 1 Peter's real quick. 1 Peter's um, 4. That we are the houses. He said, let us take them. We all have come together confederate that we're going to take the Israelites into captivity. 1 Peter 4, 17. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That's us. We're the house of God. Judgments must begin with us. That's all I needed. Drop that real quick. Go to the book of 1 Maccabees 2. So all these nations, all these nations came together. All these nations are our enemies. Have not all these nations conspired to put us into captivity, men? Okay. Look what he said in 1 Maccabees 2. Two and ten. First Maccabees chapter two, verse ten. What nation hath not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? Which nation have not had a part in her kingdom? Name one. We just read all those nations that have taken part in the destruction of the Israelites. So now guess guess what we're fighting right now? I want to see if you men can understand that. We're fighting the enemy west within. I'm going to go deeper. Some of us are finding enemies in our own house. Then we find the enemies within the body. And then we got to fight the enemies out there. You better be built for this, bro. Y'all better be built for this fight. You know when you become dangerous? When you find the enemy at home? When, you, when they know you don't care. There's nothing you could do to me. Take the kids, take them. Got to pay child support? How much? I'm like, you can't see him? See who? <laughs> I want to use the word, I want to use, but I can't use it because I know I'd be getting recorded, but. Don't call ever again. What's your number? We're going to lock you up. So what? We're going to kill you. I'm already dead. This ain't my kingdom. So what you going to do? There's nothing for you to do. Take away the power. They already got power because you make them think they got power. We got to believe there ain't nothing you what you got. Imagine if all of us thought like that. Thought like that and believed that. Oh, gosh. This kingdom will fall tomorrow. This place will fall up tomorrow. All they're hoping for is find enough of us that care about the stuff right here. They've got enough of the niggas to care. Don't worry about it. We got them. All right, so now prepare the troops. Prepare the men. The first thing we got to deal with 
is, again, we need soldiers to have the minds of bishops. Think like a bishop. Think like it. Let me tell you something. How many of you, and this, I know all of you weren't like this, but how many of you, prior to the truth, already had leadership qualities, like you was a leader? Okay. Your job is help build the men that didn't have that up to being that. You got to help. How do you get everybody on that same page? And now you got the Bible to really build them for real. Do you have the skill? To take, you could be a soldier, but that don't mean that you don't got the spirit of a leader. You just don't got a rank of a leader. But you could be a leader. Do you understand that, right? Here's your practice. First at home. If you cannot lead and control your wife and children, you're not a leader. That's your little training wheel right there. You go home, you practice that, tell your wife, listen, babe, I need you to do this, and she actually does it. She listens to you and respect you and do it. If you can't get her, you ain't going to get men to follow you. Because generally, we're already dominant souls, you know. All of us are alpha males, I would hope. There's only one in here, I heard. Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you right now, not talking for myself, I've been this truth now for a long time. Well, not long, but long in comparison to many of you. And I've been around Bishop Nathaniel as long as I've been the truth. And there's no way I'd have followed him if he didn't run his house. Because I run shit. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying so hard, Lord. I run things. And I don't follow nobody that asks me to do nothing that they themselves don't do. I learned that from the world. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't that kind of person like that. I don't follow like that. I got a seed in you. And that seed means I got to see you actually running things for me to listen. Nah. Nah. You can't expect man to follow if you don't set that right example. So you could be a soldier and got that on you. Take that soldier status because you don't have the experience in, 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 in this truth, but your mind is already a mind of a leader. You're a throwaway thinker. You find a ways to push this gospel further. How to make this machine move better. But at the same time, you have to respect the order. And that's the balance. Let's begin. Young men that have the mind of a bishop. Give me Susanna 145. Give me two readers now. Who, give me, who's, who's the strong reader? Yuri's here? Okay, is there another strong reader over there? No, no, I, you know, here's the thing. Thanks for giving me them. I'm saying there's another strong reader, and like they're all clueless. Like, I, am I? Is it, it's me? All the men should have had their hand. I'm a strong, or at least the ones that are strong. I said twice, everybody's looking around like, is there another strong reader here? Okay, choose ye out one of you men as a next reader. Just don't, just don't disappoint me. Damn, that's a man of action. I need a reader. He went and got the mic and gave it to somebody. Ooh, finally. Somebody making things happen. Hey, so you better not, you better not, I'm telling you, you better not, you better come out, out the box. Let's go. Uh, uh, so who's going to be the other reader? Who's the other reader? Well, not, not your mind. Read for me. Before you read it, give me, uh, no, Asa, read so, uh, Susanna 145. Uh, Nechemiah, I want you to read Samuel's, um, 1 Samuel 17. So let's go with you, Asa. History of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 45. Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth, whose name was Daniel, who cried with a loud voice, I am clear from the blood of this woman. So it says the Lord raised up this young man. Read again, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Verse 45. Right. Therefore... When she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth. He raised up the Holy Spirit of this young youth. Read on. Whose name was Daniel. Whose name was Daniel. Read on. Who cried with a loud voice. He what? 
who cried with a loud voice. He cried with a loud voice. Read on. I am clear from the blood of this woman. Then all the people turned them toward him and said, what mean these words that thou hast spoken? So try to, try to, remember, I like to play it on my mind. Daniel's a young dude, a young guy. He cried, I said, listen, why? Because God was in his spirit. He said, nah, I'm clear of her blood. You all ready to kill this woman, but nah, I ain't down with that. No, I'm, I'm making sure you all know, I don't agree with that. And they all turned to see, so what you saying? Read on. So he's standing in the midst of them, said, are ye such fools, ye sons of Israel? Listen, he understood the dire, he understood how to die. This is about to kill a woman. He had to shake up the room. Yo, what's wrong with y'all? Do y'all know you're about to be complicit to a murder? He had to come out the box to save this woman's life. He couldn't come in there, and I'm not telling you to be disrespectful, man, but he couldn't come in. We're talking about life and death. We're talking about you carrying to speak at a camp. You're all about to kill a person. Nah, I'm not with that. No. Stop. What, were you all such fools? You all about to kill somebody? Read. Are ye such fools, ye sons of Israel, that without examination or knowledge of the truth, ye have condemned a daughter of Israel? Mm. Return again to the place of judgment. For they have borne false witness against her. When you get a chance, read the rest of that on your own. But, but he had a spirit. He was a young man, but he had the spirit of God on him. He knew what to speak. If I don't speak now, she's going to die. Right? All right, go from that real quick. Give me uh, uh, 1 Samuel 17, 12 through 14. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. Now David was a son of the, that Ephraimite of Beth, Bethlehem, Judah, mm -hmm. whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. Mm -hmm. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to be to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and the next unto him, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. What verse you at? That was verse 13. Read on. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. I want you to jump to verse 22. Verse 22. And David left his carriage in the hand of the, hand, the, hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake, according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Look what he says, what came out of David's mouth. Who is this man to defy the armies of the living God? This is a young man with the mind of a bishop. Who is this man to defy you think we don't got God in our corner? All the men was afraid, but David's like, nah. We got this. Jump on down to verse 38. What verse that was that you read? Uh, that was 27, or 26. Uh, just jump to 30. I'm, I can't, I got, I'm pressed for time. Read on. Verse 27. And the people. No, no, uh, verse 38. Verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. Read and David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. So he had, he had his mind was right. He said, listen, they tried dressing the greater go fight against Goliath. He said, nah, listen, Saul, King Saul, I can't wear this. I don't, I'm not proved with this stuff. He wasn't prideful. Like, I, I, listen, I know what I'm saying, but this ain't how I got to fight. I can win this because I got God with me but not with what you got me on with right now. Read on. And David put them off, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook 
and put them in a shepherd's bag. Jump, jump, forget that. Jump to verse 45. Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. That's the mind of a bishop. He's a leader, a general. Read on. The God of the armies of Israel. So he's Thou telling you, he knows where his, where his winning is coming from. The victory comes to God. He said, you come with this, but I'm coming with God. That, I'm telling you, David was a young man moving like a general. He knew what he was talking about. How are you going to defy the armies of God? Giving God the honor. Read on. Whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee in mine hand. And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. Okay, so when you read on, we know that he killed him. He took his head and he won. All right? So these are young men that's moving like a bishop, like a general with the mind of a leader. All right? Our job now is to compel the people to come in. We're preparing the troops. We have to compel them to come into this harvest. That means we got to hit these streets. What you see today here, giving all honor to the Most High God, the Most High used Bishop, myself, Bishop Yawasop, the deacons, to help build what you're watching today. And the captains that came right along. That's how we all over this earth. Whatever reason God chose us for this mission, for this. An old job was to compel you all to come in here. To come and serve God. So we can make more men like this. And then you make a go out there and make more men like this. And more men like this. Do you see the urgency, men? Are you ready to compel the people to come? When everybody's moving like that, from a soldier right on up, man, we dangerous. Shut us down off of YouTube. We'll put men out there two by two everywhere. We'll be an infestation of righteousness on the earth. <laughs> Luke 14, we will infect. I tell you, you better easy. Don't, don't, don't turn us up, because we turn up. Yeah, you, I'm telling you, I see. Uh, yeah, you think you think you seen the best? Ah, we just been toying with y'all. You mean Luke fourteen twenty three? Uh, Asa, um, um, Asa fourteen twenty three. Uh, fourteen twenty three. Yeah, read on down. Yeah, read that for me, Asa. Luke chapter fourteen and verse twenty three. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. That's how we built this right here, because we obeyed this. We compelled the people, prepare the troops, get them ready. Read on. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. No, drop that to verse. Which one you said it was? Oh, we're going to come back to that. Compel them to come in. Isaiah 30. Read that, uh, uh, Asa. Now I want you for me, Nehemiah, get me Ezekiel 37, Isaiah 30 and 20. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Yeah, those days are over. We're not removed into an though, though, though the most I give us, he allow, he allow the nations afflict us, we're not going to be moved into corners no more. We're not going to be afraid to tell you what the Bible says. I saw some recently a dude. Uh, he got the he got that juice. You know what I'm talking about? I know you know, but you know what I'm talking about the Fauci juice. Yeah, and Lamar Hamlin, and they asked him, "How do you think?" You know, because he had a, he had some uh, heart issues. They asked him, "How do you think he got it?" And he was afraid to say that he took the juice. How the hell you gonna tell me? I almost died of a heart attack from something, and I'm afraid to express what happened to me. I'm afraid to speak the truth. Why would I be afraid to tell that you all took us into slavery, you raped, robbed, and murdered us? Why would I be afraid that you did it to me? You should be afraid that you did that to me. They got, Jake is weak. I'm telling you, this black man is weak, man. I just had a heart attack from taking this juice, and I'm afraid to, to boy, I'm telling you, that Esau pimp game is strong. He got Jake, he got Jake, but we ain't like that. I'm be afraid to say, that you left us into captivity, you're going to go into captivity. 
The Bible said that. You lose, you let us into captivity, you're going to go into captivity. Oh, you don't got the love of Jesus. I don't got the love of white Jesus. You're right. Why would the hell I'm going to be afraid to say that for? No, 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 no. We're no longer going to be removed into the corner. Ezekiel 37. That old time religious stuff is done. We at war. Nobody want to hear that. 37 and 9. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. That's us compelling the people to come in. Read on. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Well, last time I read, an army is for war. He said, listen, the breath of life has entered into an exceeding great army standing up. Now the army come together and they got to sit in the war room and figure out tactics on how they're going to win this battle. Or you want us to play PlayStation? You came here to play PlayStation? Want to talk about basketball? Or do a TikTok challenge? Man, listen. And mighty, exceeding, great army stood up. That's you all. That's us. That word went out and it listed wherever they want to go and it received, and you all received the word. And now you're being charged. We're preparing you for what's coming. We need all of you ready to fight. Fight for your law, fight for the laws of God. And he said, I will defend you. Read. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. That's us. Read on. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. People think it's hopeless out here. But we tell you, no, there's hope. God said, I'm going to bring you up out of these graves, these, these, these ghettos that you're in right now, I'm gonna, and I'm going to put you back in the land of Israel. I'm going to give you back the reward. You're going to get back the kingdom. I'm telling you, I said this a million times for me, what got me to this truth that made me understand and made me really consider when I heard, he that lead into captivity shall go into captivity. When I first time I heard that, I'm like, what? I would, I'd never forget. I was like, what? What is that? I said, show me that. Look up there. Look. I, didn't, I didn't need glasses back then. I was like, oh, snap. Well, I know we went to slavery. So that means we don't put people in slavery? Well, damn, I like that. Now my whole perspective changed. Of, okay, so you tell me, so now how do I get that? Well, you got to do these things. So I do these things, and you say, I'm going to live forever, and they're going to be serving me? That sound like good. Okay. Now this gospel sound good. Okay. I like that. Yep. So what I got to do? You got to go to war. Okay, cool. Guess what? You go to war, you can never lose. And we never, there's not even a chance, that there's no possibility that we could lose? No. It, it's meant for you. Even whatever happened, I come back and I still get it. Yep. Oh, snap. So when we start? That was 1995. <laughs> I go, I go to all President Mosai. I go, go where for what? At the end, we get. The, at the end, we win. So, what you telling me? This this stuff is fixed. Yep. And all I gotta do is don't give up. Yep. Man, listen. Psst. War, war. I'm not giving up for what? I don't lose. I gotta just continue on. But now we got the army together. We're preparing the men, right? We got to have this. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Second Corinthians, uh, give me 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. And uh, let your mind give me 1 Corinthians 12, 25. Uh, you know what? Asa, read 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 and 12, 25. Then I need you, let your mind read Deuteronomy 1 and 12. I need you to write this down, let your mind. Ready? Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 1 and 12 to 18, Hebrews 13, 17, Romans 13 and 1. You got those? One more time. I need Deuteronomy 1, 12 to 18, 
Hebrews 13, 17, Romans 13 and 1. I need from you, Asa, what did I ask him to read from again? 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, 1 Corinthians 12, 25, and we stopped there. Let's go. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. So we got this mighty army. We went out and compelled the people that are coming in now. Now we got to make sure we all speaking the same thing. That's why you can't be in here with zitzits and head covering. And over here, you were here with pants, no head covering. You saying Yeshua, you saying Yahweh Shai, you saying Jesus, you keeping the Passover, eating roast beef, you keeping the Passover. Nah, 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 no. No, no confusion here. We impair that we speak the same thing. What we teach here in Atlanta is what we're going to teach in Florida, is what we're going to teach in, in Africa, what we're going to teach the same exact thing. You know what we're going to teach? First off, the white man is the devil. If you didn't hear me and hear us, we all understand that the white man is the devil, right? There's a whole lot of people that believe that. And everybody online, I hope you all said the same thing. That we are God's chosen and your number's up, Cracker. It's up. It's up. We have war, baby. We have war. Read on. Give me 1 Corinthians 12. 12, 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body. That's right. There can't be a schism. We can't say different things. Read on. But that the members should have the same care one for another. And we ain't going to accept no traitors amongst us. Destroying, dividing us. We ain't going to let them get no time in here to try to pull apart what God is building. It's each one of you men job, you women job, not to let people whisper. To uproot and destroy what we building. Somebody come in here and tear apart your house? Nah, not on my watch, on your watch. Hell no. Care who it is. Can we my wife boot out and find me another? My son boot him out and find me another. If it's me, boot me out. Put somebody else in a place. But we had to build Christ's kingdom. And we are at war with everybody that's against that. Do you want me to understand that? Yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to find out if you really believe what you're saying. Go ahead, go ahead, Nehemiah. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 12. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Taking you, taking you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. That's why, I, that's the most I said, he shows instruction that we got to have men rules over. There's nothing wrong with having a man rule over you. Some men take it as, oh, why is he telling me? Because that's who God called, man. Shut your black lips and just do the job. You unprofitable servant. Always got to complain. All I can't take is a complaining man. I don't like complaining women, but complaining men, oh, I don't like y'all. Why, 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 why? You never said that when you put out chicken soup for Popeyes. You never said that. Are you here saying that now? Read on. And you answered me and said, the thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. That's order, that's structure, that's a mighty army being built. Read on. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. And as leaders, you better judge righteously. You better be right with your judgment. Read on. You shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of man. And the judgment is God's. Who's? God's. Yeah, we ain't playing that game. The judgment, judgment is God's. It don't matter where you sit here in this body. You, we are all subject to the judgment of God. And y'all better not be weak, let people get away with stuff care who it is. Me, it don't matter. The judgment is whose? God. Read. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do. And he said, I command you. Now, this is how you, this, you respect in the order. 
He said, I command you at this time all the things that you're supposed to do. Follow the order. Hebrews 13 and 17. And, uh, and oh yeah, I gave that one. 13, 17, Romans 13, 1. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. The Bible says what? Obey them that have the rule over you. That's how this army works. Is you got to obey them that have rule over you. We don't. And submit yourselves. And what? Submit yourselves. We don't. For they watch for your soul. I'm telling you something. A lot of times you hear us talking, ones who've been around for a minute. I'm telling you, you may think we ranting, but I, I, don't, I only know what I know. Two reasons. One, either I bumped my head and made these mistakes, or I've seen it made over and over again, and I can kind of tell you, don't do that. That's not going to work for you. A lot of times when you hear me talking, I use a lot of my own self that I've been through to help you all figure out, don't do that. Saving you a headache. But if you don't want to listen, you can do it your way. Let's see how it works out for you. I can pretty much tell you. You be thinking I'm like I'm prophesying. No, no, no. I just been down that road 15 years ago. I'm telling you, <laughs> that's not how this plays out. I've warned brothers, don't do what you're about to do. I'm telling you, you're about to be out of here. You're going to be lonely. No, no, I'm telling the spirit, okay, I'm trying to warn you. And then you get booted out, and then now you're out there venting, and you're sitting home. Just imagine, hear me, I'm going to play it out. You think you're right. You get, you get pitched up out of here, and you're standing strong on what you believe, and that's what you do. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, brothers, have the spirit and make a video about them. And then here comes the next Sabbath. You come home, and then now... You get up, but you don't have no purpose of where to go. I'm just going to be studying the Bible and watch videos. And I'm going to watch you all. <laughs> and then the next Sabbath come, and you do the same thing again. And the next Sabbath come, you do the same thing again. And that sugar, honey, and iced tea gets old. You know why? Because you wasn't called to be a builder. Now, you might have been called to help build it here, but you was stupid enough not to live it. Listen. And now you're stressed out. And now you're a nut job. And now you're going up to schools and walking up there and knocking on the door and saying, hey, let me baptize you. Because you're bored out of your mind. And in your mind, you know you made the wrong choice. But it's too late now. You're so stuck on stupid that you can't see it. Because you didn't want to listen to them that was watching for your souls. So now you have to reason yourself because you live on Shutter Island right now. So you have to reason with yourself that what you're doing makes sense. But guess who only makes sense to? Only makes sense to you. And that must be a lonely place. I wouldn't know because I've never been there and I never want to go there. I could only imagine. But damn, that must suck. Why? You just didn't want to listen. You thought you was too good to listen. You thought you was too smart. You thought you were smarter than everybody. Sad state. Romans 13 and 1. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Hey, guys, let me baptize you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God bless your dumb behind. Read on. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. What the Bible says? Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. Let every soul, every soul, every soul be subject to the higher powers. You want to have order? You want to build an army? The 10, you got to listen to the 20. The 20, you got to listen to 50. The 50 to 80. Now, when I say listen, I'm not talking about they saying, hey, come over here. Let's, uh, let's worship another God. I'm telling you, listen, you got to clean the bathroom. Bishop, y'all will stop Bishop and tell me right now, go clean the bathroom. Without question, I'm going to do it. And if I'm lying, may God judge me. I don't care. I just want to be right here with the army. I don't, I'm not too big for nothing in here. The order come down. Can I, that's what you do. Yes, sir. You see fit. I got my eye on the prize. I want the kingdom. And that day, I won't be a bathroom. What? Come on, that's going to stop me? Nah, I ain't too proud for that. Some of you are some unruly niggas. Hate, hate direction. Despise government. Then, man, you got to root up out of here. Read again. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Read. For there is no power but of God. The power is who? Of God. So that person that's right, got that God got them there. For whatever reason, God got them there. God wanted them there. For whatever reason, God got me right here. I'm a bishop of a congregation. Lord, no. <laughs> I ain't the most eloquent speaker. I know I could be rough around the edges. But for whatever reason, 
God, in his time, decided, I'm going to use you for something. Thank you, God, because if you can't be used, you're useless, and I want to be used for something. Great. Whatever reason, this is why it's, it, it is what it is. That power is ordained of who? God. Read. The powers that be are ordained of God. Read on. Whosoever, therefore, resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. You sure you want to do that? How do you build an army if you start resisting the, the powers that's set up over you? You tell God you don't know what you're doing, God. He shouldn't be there. Ooh, you crazy. You crazy. I don't know why this person do. Who the hell do they think they are? Ordained of God. That's what I think. That's right. Are you men not ordained of God? Yes, you're ordained of God. Who said it? God said it. <laughs> that's right. That's what he says. Uh, Sirach uh, 8, 8 and 9. That, uh, Ace, I want you to get me Sirach 8, verse 8 and 9, Matthew 16, 15 to 20. And for you, Nehemiah, give me Ecclesiastes 10, 10 and 11, Micah 7 and 5, Judges 16, 16 through 19. Did you all get that? I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> God, I, I, this, this class will be three hours, I, I, a three days, a three-day class. Okay, Ace, you got what I asked you? Yes, sir. I know. I have four minutes. I, come on. Go, go, Ace. Ecclesiasticus chapter 8 and verse 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. You better listen. Read on. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and in how to serve great men with ease. You want to build an army? You got to prepare the men. You got to learn first how to, be a, how to be a soldier, how to be a follower, and you learn how to serve great men with ease. And then when you're a great man, your example will be the same thing. I'm telling you, as a great man that I'm supposedly in this body, I'm a servant to you all. That's my job to serve you all, not you to serve me. But if some people, and some people because they have, I'm talking about these weak men that have um, Insecurities. I see again. I'm laughing. I'm sorry for people's brothers with insecurities. I'm not trying to trivialize it. Yes, I am. Here's the point, because I don't like that. But you know, you get a position, and you take, you get beyond yourself because you wasn't about that before in the world. So you, you you act stupid. I don't want none of you following me unless I'm the right example to follow. I don't want you ever turn a blind eye to me if you see I'm doing something wrong. I don't need that. I don't need nobody to stroke my ego. I'm a man. I stand on my own. Make me feel good. Yeah, Bishop, great. You're a dummy. Don't follow. You follow because you see what they're doing is about the Lord's work. You understand that, right? If everybody got that mind, we bad. Drop that. What's the next one I got you holding? Bishop, you want verse 9? Yes, please. I'm sorry. Verse 9. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers. That's how it works. Read on. That's and of it. Okay, finish it. And of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need requires. You're going to learn when to talk. They'll teach you when to talk. <coughs> the greatest gift as a young man sometimes is silence. I tell you, you never go wrong with silence. You only speak up when there's a need to. Like, hey, you're about to kill this person. They don't deserve to die. Now you can talk up. Other times you just save yourself. What you got, Nechemiah? Oh, no, no. You, Asa 16, Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Simon Peter understood that this was the Messiah. Read on. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. He said, You blessed, meaning what? You are set apart of the other apostles. For whatever reason, God revealed to you who I am. God chose you, Simon. Read on. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Right. But my Father which is in heaven. So Simon had a special little pocket with him and God. God said, I'm going to choose him right now. I'm going to tell you something again. I mean this with all humility, giving honor to God. God, for whatever reason, chose Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel, to do what he's doing. Whatever reason it was, that was the man that's chosen while we are all sitting here right now. God chose him to use him. And we know it's God is the power, so we're not exalting like he's a God. But every last one that's in here right now has learned because of what he did. Cool. I just want to be on that train. I'm good. Put me on a caboose once it's going through the gate. I'm good. I'm all right. 
Acknowledge that. Respect the order. Niggas get besides themselves. I tell you, black people don't know how to behave, man. Anybody want to be the head nigga in charge? Nobody, I'm going to tell you something. I can tell you right now, 99.99% of us do not want Nathaniel's job. Bishop Nathaniel's job. You don't want that. That snap your damn neck. He was tailored for his reason for whatever. I'm telling for my reason. I'm good with that. God's going to put you where he needs you at. Read. Verse 18. And I say unto, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Listen, on this rock, Christ, I'm going to build my church. Read on. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against And the gates of hell is not going to prevail against what we're building here. It ain't going to work. You go to war all you want, you're going to lose, dude. Read. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Do you understand that he gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven? We know what the will of God is and how to get it. All we got to do is turn it and open the door. He said, but what you bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Read on. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Look at the power he gave him. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you loose, loose. That's the power he had on earth as a man. You think Peter wasn't a man like we were? Of course he was a regular man like we were. But he wasn't a regular man like we are. He was chosen for a specific thing. And God said, whatever you bound on earth will be bound. That's what I said. When people hear buck against wearing the garments, man, you stupid. There's a reason why God put that spirit in him and said, that's what we have. Oh, I don't know why I got to wear it. God, drop it. You stupid. God, you be missing the mark, man. Read. What verse we at? Verse 20. D read. Then charged he his disciples that they should t tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Now he charged his disciples, don't tell no, don't be a babbler. That's the next thing. Move in silence. We can't have a war room and everybody is running their mouth. That doesn't work. A babbler, run your mouth. Got to be on social media. Hey, sisters, let me help you all out when we go to war. And I know you godly women are so proud of your men out there going to war. Aren't you, ladies? How about the rest of y'all? Any more? Damn, man, I'm discouraged with these women. <laughs> Ladies, aren't you proud of your men that go out to war? Yeah. Don't you all want to see them come home safely? Yeah. Let me help you. I'm going to give you a little something. So when you see them out there, go to war. Because what we do, what we talk about generally is stuff that we already did. So when you see a man at the war, and you know how this, and see, this, I can't, this, this stuff I can't get to today, do yourself a favor, and do your man a favor if you love him. And you see him in the army of the Lord, don't circle his face and say, that's my Lord right there. Don't do that. All right? Because now they're going to say, oh, you're his wife? Like, okay, maybe we can get to him through her. <laughs> Ladies, let me help you. Help yourself and help your Lord. Stop doing that. Here's another one. If you don't see Shamara doing it or Parya doing it, don't do that. Just follow that. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good barometer to start. Say, just watch it. If you're proud of him, show him when he gets home that you're proud of him. No, but you ain't doing it that you doing it for Facebook likes. Oh, you doing it for Facebook likes. Go ahead. I'm gonna I ain't never gonna get through this class. Go ahead. Bishop, Bishop, your blood is too, man. Stop putting your family on social media. Mm. Cut it out. Your guys put your kids in there, your wife fist in there. Your bowel movement. Your guys, your guys got married. You put your new wife in the in the in social media. What is wrong with you? Your sisters got married. You put your husband in so what what's the purpose of it? I mean, tell me what's the purpose of it? Facebook I, I don't likes, get it. Facebook likes. Why do you take a picture of your wedding you put on social media? What's the purpose of it? Now the enemy got everything he needed. Stop. You put your kids, you got a newborn, you put it in there. What the hell is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What is the purpose of it? Who are you showing it to? Let me For some you. reason, some of you thinking it's only Israel who's seen these things. No. That's what some of you think. You think it's only people in your page who see it. No, that's not true. Esau got everything. Stop. You telling the enemy stuff that he's not supposed to know. You voluntarily give him information. What is wrong with you? Who is you? <laughs> Go ahead, Cap. No, watch this real quick. Um, Cap, you asked me what to say? Go ahead. As far as those picture goes, or they'll put up a picture of a group of brothers 
giving away the information of brothers over know the pictures online. You I, you put me in the picture, putting my name up there, putting anybody else's name up there. I didn't even know about the picture, but the enemy knows now. Yeah, thanks. Gift that keeps on giving. Verse 20 again. Verse 20 again. Verse 20. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Right. Drop that. Go me Ecclesiastes 10 and 10 to verse 11. What did I ask you for, Netramiah? That's what you want. Which are, which are the other ones I asked you for? Uh, Micah 7 and 5, Judges okay. 16, 16 through okay, 19. Okay, you're going to give me this. Ecclesiastes 10 and 10 to 11. Uh, I want Sirach 32, verse 7. Micah 7 and 5, Judges 16, 16 to 19. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10. No, no, that, that's, that, that's not you. That's uh, Netramiah. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10 if the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge then must he put to more strength but wisdom is profitable to direct but what wisdom is profitable to direct but we said now if you got an iron and the, and the, and the, the sword is blunt you got to put more strength to chop but wisdom cuts quick gets to the point read on surely the serpent will bite without enchantment and a babbler is no better. <laughs> it says, surely the serpent will bite without any enchantment. And a what? And a babbler is no better. You know a babbler? He just don't know. He just can't stop running his mouth. He can't even help it. He don't even need to be egged on. He just tell everything. You can't build an army like that. We can't have the weak links amongst us. Sharing all information, what we're about to do. Damn. Where we going? When we going? A babbler is no better. Give me that real quick in uh, Sirach 32 and 7. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32 verse 7. So young man, this is the way you save yourself from that. Read. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. If there's no need of you, keep quiet. Read on. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. And when you ask twice, can you please edify? Oh, okay, you get your words real quick. You know why it says scarcely you speak, young man? Because when you're younger, just by default, you're going to say dumb stuff. And not that you mean to say dumb stuff, but you just don't, you're just going to do it because you don't have a lot of experience. So you want to hear something I said when I was younger, when I was dumb? You guys want to hear what I said? Okay, you don't want to hear. So let's move on then. Good. Nobody wants to hear it. I was going to share something with you. I don't want to listen. Force me. Force me. You're all going to laugh. So I walked into the office uh, with Bishop Nathaniel and some of the Men back in the days, this is before us here. I was a young man. I said this before. I said, yeah, I got something I want to bring out, some understanding. So Bishop, right, go ahead. I said, you know, we can smoke weed. <laughs> he said, what? And I used the scripture about the mandrakes. Bishop looked at me and said, get your ass out of this office, man. Get out of here. But in my mind, I thought I was being deep. You know, I, did anybody ask me to come in there? No. All I did look stupid. He said, what? Get your ass about the office. So it go. I was about to shut it up. Now, I know the understanding was no good now because 20 something years later, <laughs> no piece of the justify. Sometimes less is best, bro. I'm telling you. I probably listen to brothers talk. I'm like, oh boy, you don't even know. Yes. A lot of time you do, I don't want to talk. I'm talking too much. You do it on Facebook. Just move on. I'm going to get to the point. Read. Micah chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a God. Mm -hmm. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that what? Lieth in thy bosom. Because for some reason, brothers, after you copulate, look how nice I said it, you guys love to talk. Yeah. Babe, let me tell you this. Let me tell you. Guys, it's like to talk. Running my, and she just be pumping you, and you be serving it up. She don't even be asking you. Right, men? No, Negro, please. Don't do nothing. This, now watch this. Watch this. Ladies, if what I'm saying makes sense, all you got to do is laugh. Right, ladies? Be saying more. Yeah, man. Let me tell you about what the war we going to. Oh, yeah, my little guy. Tell on. Now, what's the problem with that? Judges 16. Judges chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. She came and asked him questions. Read on. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I had been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. Read. 
If it be, if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Now watch this, read. And when Delilah saw that, he had told her all his heart. She sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. Mm -hmm. And she made him sleep upon her knees. What? what? And she <laughs> made him sleep upon her knees. This is Samson. This man was a juggernaut. She said, she said, come put your put your head right here, baby. Don't worry, baby. He like a he like a little bait got front of her lap. This man gave told his whole business. Gave away, you don't share your secrets. There's certain things it ain't for the woman to know. There's certain things she don't need to know. What you need to know is educate these children, raise them up in the fear of God, make sure my son know who his daddy is, make sure my daughter keep her knees closed, Bible open, make sure you take care of the food and what you got done. Certain war things the women don't need to know. How you how you gonna tell the woman what your weakness is? Stupid. You gonna tell her what what your weakness is? Who does that? <laughs> See, I didn't do that. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Damn. <laughs> All right, listen, man. This, it, uh, listen, listen. I'm a life last. If Bishop Yawasop allows me, I'll continue this next week. Because there's a lot I didn't get into. But so far, we stood off about the war room, how we defeat our enemies. Ladies, we need you all to support us, all right? And what we need, not what you need, but what we need to take down this enemy. As Bishop would say, never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. We're going to kill you off, enemies. You are going to lose with the word of God. Stay tuned, Bishop Nathaniel, up next.